Hey, beautiful spirits, why is it so hard to lose weight? Especially after 40. It's like some switch turns off and, man, it's difficult. For a lot of us, anyway. I'm L.D. Juarez and I'm your Sparkle Coach. And on Mondays, we talk about all things bully. Depression, anxiety, all the things that cause depression, anxiety, grief, PTSD, all that stuff. And, man, if you're like me, the weight loss challenge is It's a difficult journey, especially after 40. It's like, what the hell? So I've got six six reasons why. And we're going to work on this together. We're going to fix this because, you know, we we deserve to feel our best and look our best, whatever that means, right? So the first reason why it's so difficult to lose weight after 40 is is because we're eating for emotional comfort, especially if you suffer from depression or anxiety, anything like that, or especially during this whole lockdown, it's been a year, y'all. Whoa. Anyway, so things are kind of opening up, but anyway, I mean, it's been some strange, stressful times, and everyone's eating a little more, they're home a little more, and it's comfort. It's emotional comfort, at least for me, that's what it is, and You just put on extra pounds, eating extra calories. So also comfort eating late at night. You know, you might be busy during the day and then late at night, things mellow out. You're kind of sitting watching TV, not working anymore or whatever. And it's easy to drink a lot of calories. It's easy to eat a lot of calories because snack foods are full of empty calories, carbs, sugar, all that. Even if you're eating some stuff that is maybe sugar-free or whatever, it kind of increases the response in your body, like thinking, oh, I need more. I've heard that. So, and I think it's true, especially if you drink a lot of diet soda or whatever. Not only does the carbonation bloat you, but it makes you think that you need more. Or if you're having smoothies all the time, fruit may be natural sugar, but it is also sugar. And it is a lot of calories. And if that's all you're doing at night, especially if you're putting protein powder in it at night, where are you going to burn those calories at? And if you're not doing muscle strengthening exercises, that protein gets stored, guess what? As fat. So does sugar. Did you know that? Crazy. So there's another reason. And another reason that is It's kind of not fair, especially to women later in life because of premenopause, menopause, all that is the hormones and the amino acid fluctuations, all those issues. It it changes the way your body does things. And then you'll notice your body proportion may change. All of a sudden you may, like me, become this pear-shaped whatever. It's like, what happened? So it's not always your fault. It's just the fact that these stupid pesky hormone shifts and amino acids. So this one website called antianxietyfoodsolution.com, this lady talks a lot about amino acids and it's interesting. I I mentioned it in a video before. So anyway, I want to research it some more, but if you change these things, it might help. So I'm all for it. I'm all about it. I really want to help my body to perform at its best. So that's something to work on. Here's another reason why. Lack of movement. So when I was, I don't know, when I was a teenager, I walked all over the place. I rode my bike and everything. So, and I had a really fast metabolism. I could eat whatever I want. You know, I ate Carl's Jr. bacon double cheeseburgers all the time. I had milkshakes. I had Frosties at Wendy's. It didn't matter. I I ate packages of cookies. I was walking all the time, everywhere. And even in my 20s and 30s, I was busy. I was running around doing stuff. But once you become a little more sedentary, a lot of us are working from home. We're in our home office. You're not getting up and taking breaks normal like you would at work with your coworkers and stuff. And you're just sitting there at the desk and all of a sudden four hours went by, you know, and even if you just get up and pace your hallway a couple times, that's still not enough exercise. So your body is stores. And if you're not eating regularly, if you're eating too little, also if you're eating too much, but if you're eating too little, your body will store that whole thing because it's in starvation mode, right? We don't need as many calories in midlife as we did in our 20s, but if you're not eating enough 
And if you're eating the wrong things, you're going to store that stuff. And that's not good. And it, it's just a losing battle. And also, if you're eating all the time, what if you're there working at your desk and you've got the nuts there and carby snacks, crackers, chips, you're eating strawberries all day, whatever it is, candy. So that could also do it. Or if you're eating, I don't know, four or five times a day, you're having your smoothie, you're having a meal, you're having a meal, you're having a meal. If you keep doing that, that is far too many calories if you're not exercising. So either way, if you eat too much or you don't eat enough, it causes a problem. So I have heard that in midlife, we don't want to eat a lot, a lot, and we don't want to eat like too little, and we don't want to totally strenuously exercise. You have to recover in between. So I think that if you can try to limit your calorie intake a little bit, my fitness pal is an awesome tool to use. I use it because I want to lose some poundage and I know that limiting our calories isn't a good thing if you can't stick to it. But I found for myself, if I can get to where I'm sticking to that and I'm used to it, my stomach gets used to it and then as time goes on, it's something I can manage and as long as I'm not doing the nighttime comfort eating and stuff anymore, it's easy for me. Other people are finding that the keto diet work for them. Some people do Mediterranean keto. Some of that stuff where you have to look at the macros and all that, I don't have the time or the patience and I hate to cook. So that doesn't really work for me, but it works for some other people. So if you're doing that, basically, if you're cutting out sugar, cutting out grains, you're going to do your, cut out dairy sometimes, that helps a lot of people. That'll help reduce bloating. That'll help you lose a lot of weight because if you're eating a lot of vegetables and stuff, it's really helpful. Vegetables, lean proteins, very good for you. Blueberries occasionally, raspberries occasionally, but cutting out the really sugary foods, the starchy foods, that will really help. And take, believe it or not, taking a walk every day will really help to get your body moving, get things happening. When you, if you're working at your desk, set a timer every hour get up. And if you work from home, go walk around the block, then go sit back down. Might be a lot, but it might work. I happen to have an exercise machine here. And the truth is most people who have exercise equipment at home don't even use it. It becomes a laundry hanger, right? Mine's not, but I prefer walking outside. So when the weather's nice, or if you can handle it, if it's a little chilly, go do those walks. It'll really help you. And try not to eat After, say, if you go to bed at 10, try to stop eating at 6. Don't eat anything else. Don't drink your calories either. Have some water, have some tea with monk fruit sweetener or something and get your body used to that. So that way you're also fasting every night and at least for 12 hours if you get up at 6 a.m. That should help you. And if you get your amino acids and your hormones all in check, that is going to help and you'll see that there are good results. At least I'm hoping for good results because I have put on so much. It is no bueno. Anyway, so let's do this, people. We deserve it. We deserve to be sparkly and we don't want to have anything going on that makes us feel yucky about ourselves. So if losing some pounds is on your list to do, you deserve it. If you embrace yourself the way you are, you didn't watch this video anyway. I am trying to embrace it, y'all. I am. But I, you know how we know what we looked like last year or two years ago. So it's not that we're trying to be unrealistic and look like we looked in our 20s. We want to look the best that we can at the age we are. And that is taking good care of ourselves health-wise, drinking enough water. I know it is hard to do. Drinking enough water, getting the movement in, not sitting all the time, not doing that emotional comfort eating. Find something else that will give you that emotional comfort without putting all those extra calories in and it will really help. I hope you found this video helpful. Please comment below. Let me know what works for you and hit like and thank you for subscribing. You deserve to sparkle the best way you are. I'll talk to you later. Bye.